Why is it that when people are like mixed with Asian, they make it their entire personality? Like, what do you mean, Asian? I feel like I might get canceled or a lot of hate for saying this. In China, we have the similar thing. A lot of people are really proud for having mixed race kids. So in Chinese, the mixed race, we call it 混血. And many people are so proud of it. And then think mixed race is better than the single race. Because mixed race babies are usually more pretty. And then can have dual citizenship. Then can speak more than one language. And then will grow up in both cultures. So a lot of people have this idea. Being mixed race is privileged and better than the single race. And in fact, in Chinese social media, Xiao Hongshu, a lot of people making mixed race as their sole personality for their social page. Like a lot of people will use the mixed race, this label or tag, to show off their mixed race kid. Or they'll show off their self as the mom of mixed race kids. And it can be a very viral and hot selling point. Many people will use the mixed race label as much as they can. I remember when I was a kid, some aunties even will use the mixed race as a compliment. Like when I was a kid, some auntie would tell me, oh my god, this girl is so pretty. Is she mixed race? And it just feels bizarre to me. Because look at me. I look nothing like a mixed race. I'm clearly Asian. But in some people's mind, as long as you are not fully Chinese, you are mixed race. Because half Chinese, half Japanese is also considered better than full Chinese in some people's mind. Which just seems crazy to me. Because in my mind, every baby or every race is beautiful in their own way. Mixed race should be the same as same race. Nobody is privileged or higher rank than another one. have good hair and skin and that's what yeah. and now it's, it's funny you said that because i mean that's what i kind of felt when i first got to the nba like who's this guy with tattoos and good hair and like he must be something so a lot of people would try me because they thought that uh he's light-skinned like you know and there, no, there, that's a why, real why that's is, a real that's a real I, conversation I you're never, getting worked up but that's a real issue it is no but it makes Super me ma it makes me mad because i'm a, this is my opinion based on my experience mm -hmm. there's no other community nope. that does that Nope. to their own like than the black community nope why who knows but i must say this and this, we each have a different experience it has taken me all these years and i'm 51. i still don't get it i don't know if we'll not ever only get do it. i not get it i refuse to accept it yeah. because it's hypocritical mm -hmm. and then we we crash or crush on white people for you know well you're racist you're that's Racism is racism, and when I'm not good enough because of how I speak, because of my hair, because my mom will, because like, that is wrong. And, and actually, we, we are the definition of diversity right. because that white mother of yours, that mm -hmm. beautiful white mother of yours, mm -hmm. fell in love with that black, black man. man. Mm -hmm. My white mother mm -hmm. was disowned by her mm. family. She had to make a choice between her family and that black man, and guess what she chose? So to me, that shows strength and right. acceptance and tolerance and diversity. And Matt, I'm done yeah. being told that I'm not enough yeah. because of this. Oh. And so if we don't start to call the hypocrisy, Bullshit. how does it change for your yeah, kids, you're right. for, for, for anyone? So right. what is the answer to that? Because you lived a different, like I didn't grow up in the inner city. I didn't mm -hmm. grow up being called the N-word mm -hmm. until much later. Mm -hmm. It's not okay yeah. that you have to be a fill in the blank and think a certain way and vote a certain way and marry a certain way in order to be black enough. What is that? Bullshit. Plain and simple. And I don't think there will ever be an answer to it. Family members, people would say, well, no, now they're black. Like you have black children. And I had other friends would say, no, you have mixed children. And I, I personally, it's my own thing. I don't like mixed. To me, it sounds like a dog, an animal. I prefer biracial. I prefer black and white, best of both worlds. Like, I feel like there's all these different things, but I was offended and I would be like, no, they're not just black. But there were times where people would say things like, well, you're so lucky because your kid's skin is so light or their eyes are blue. And then I would jump on the they're black. They're black. You, <laughs> wait a minute. Wait yeah, yeah. a minute. Now they're black. Okay. You know, it's kind of because like. Because they're be, making a point. Right, because they're they trying were trying to, to make, make them it, yeah. just white. Right. But it was funny because it, I was being told if they're black, they're black. I don't care if it's 1%. I don't care if it's 50%. And I would be on the team sort of of Shannon. Like, wait, they're both. It doesn't matter the percentage. But when it came down to it or anyone ever challenged that my children were whiter or, you know, their eyes, their hair, things like that came into play, I was like, my black children, like they became black and not white. They were not biracial. They were not, you know, both 
they were black then. So I have gone back and forth in my life in experiences on what I want them to be represented as. Because if I wanted to advocate or I didn't like how someone was trying to make them whiter than they were, that bothered me. Mm. So I became, nope, there's that like 1%. So they're black. So speak to that a little. Let's, let's dive into that a little bit further, right? What some of the, you know, you just spoke about it where somebody says, oh, luckily they have light skin, which means that they would have some type of privilege or they wouldn't be seen as black, right? Through my mother's uh, family found out she was dating a black man. And so for those of you that don't know this part of my story, I'm going to fill you in. I was given up for adoption when I was six months old by a Caucasian woman. And yeah, she was dating black men. And they found out about it and they were all too unhappy. Uh, when I was adopted, I was given this whole story about how my mother struggled with um, and this is my biological mother, struggled with giving me up for adoption and really, you know, just contemplated keeping me. And my entire life, I held on to that story. Well, come to find out, she did not contemplate keeping me. As a matter of fact, they waited six months to see if I darkened up. And apparently, my very African-American features came, you know, shining through and uh they were not able to keep me so i relate so much to this story because let me tell you there's one thing to be given up for adoption and there's another thing to find out that one of the main reasons you were given up for adoption is because you were black a year and i believe a day or so after i was born she gave birth to another child, which was a boy. And she gave that child up for adoption as well, who was also half black. So let me tell you, especially the 70s and 80s are filled with adoptees, biracial adoptees, that, you know, women went out and had relationships. I guess some of them maybe have were in love, some of them weren't, but had relationships with black men but they weren't able to keep the baby. So not only did that child have to grow up with the understanding that they were adopted, but they also had to grow up with the um, knowledge that their identity was going to be a struggle. So they kind of were left hanging in that respect. So I identify with this woman's story. I identify with this woman's experience, although my adoptive family, that was a whole different struggle. Whole different struggle. Oh, I saw this video yesterday and I something told me, something told me to screen record the video because I knew it wasn't going to be up long. So, there was this black woman, right? She, and, and in my opinion, I feel like you shouldn't even be speaking on this unless you were in the certain situation that I am in or anybody else I'm about to talk about. So this black woman said, if you are biracial, black and white, you must pick one side to lean upon more than the other. And then you relinquish your rights to that other race. Okay. First off, let me explain something to you, Shug. I, one, you shouldn't even be speaking on this. You shouldn't even be speaking on this. And in the video, she just kept describing, you know, like if you pick to be white, then you lose your black card. You can't come to the cookouts. You can't do this. You can't do that. And that you accept racism. If you accept the white side, you accept racism. Where they do that at? And I know somebody's going to be like, well, racism is real. White people do do that. I understand that. But I'm about to blow your mind because I actually had this discussion with a mixed client. She is black and white. Oh, my God. Me and her had the conversation this morning. I said, can I ask you a legit question? And I want you to be honest with me. I said, you know, you, you grew up with both sides of your family, right? She said, yeah. I said, did you experience more racism coming from your white side or your black side? I looked her dead in her face and she gave me the same exact answer that I was going to give. 
I actually experienced more racism from the black side of my family. Just due to the fact that it was like, oh, you're white. You think that you're more superior. I'm six years old. I don't even know what's going on right now. Like, what are you talking about? And, and, and it blows my mind that apparently, you know, oh, r r racism is thrown, you know, oh, white. You're, 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 it's r racist. It's racist. No. No, like, can, can y'all just, like, erase that? Like, just get just get away from it. It's not about racism 24-7. Okay, look, check this out. I got a dreadlock cap on my head, right? What, so you're telling me that if I classified as being more white, then I would have to get rid of this because white people don't wear it? I'm just, I'm just curious. I'm just curious because, you know, it, it really ticked me off, and I wish, oh, my God, I wish I had a screen recorded the video, but I did not. But I just want to let you know, I got the best of both worlds. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you. I had some people on the black side of my family that was like, you know, like, oh, blah, 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 white people. And the white side of my family, honestly, they didn't even care. They didn't even care. They were just like, must be cool to be black and white. I was like, it is. It's amazing. You know what I'm saying? But what's your opinion on this? Like, what, what do y'all really feel? Like, I, I don't care if you're black, white, or b b biracial, both, whatever. Please, please. Stitch this video. I am really curious to hear what you have to say about this certain situation. I want to talk about the one drop rule because the one drop rule doesn't apply to mixed black people like me, but it would more likely apply to people like this. Kelly Curtis, an Olympian skeleton athlete. Let me explain. The one drop rule was a tool of racial classification primarily used in the 19th and 20th century. And it was used to qualify and quantify who was black and the rule was if you had one drop of black blood then you were black some words they used to do this were mulatto quadroon and octoroon words that we don't use anymore a mulatto would be somebody who has about 50 percent black ancestry and about 50 percent white ancestry or one black parent and one white parent a quadroon would have one quarter black ancestry and three quarters white ancestry and an octoroon is somebody who would have had one eighth black ancestry. So if we were looking at their great grandparents, it might look like they had one black great grandparent and seven white great grandparents. And they would be considered legally black, even though it's very unlikely that they would look black. So the one drop rule wouldn't apply to me. It wouldn't apply to my child if my partner was white. It would apply to my child's child if my child's partner was white. And Kelly Curtis has openly stated that she does not want to be regaled as the first black skeleton Olympian. She recognizes that she has black ancestry, she recognizes that she is biracial, and she recognizes that she is not phenotypically black. These are Kelly Curtis's parents, and the news outlets that I've read have described her dad as black, and I do not know him, or how he identifies, or what his parents look like, but it would make sense that Kelly would come out looking the way that she looks. And while I do think that we should let multiracial people identify in the way that they want to identify based on their own life experiences, I do also think that calling Kelly Curtis the first black Olympian in the sport of skeleton is black erasure. I think even somebody that looks like me taking up too much space in blackness or being the face of blackness is also black erasure. Am I saying that Kelly Curtis or Kelly Curtis's father are not black? No. Am I saying that Kelly Curtis should be the black face of skeleton? No. And she doesn't think so either. I have a genuine question. How do y'all decide what mix people you consider black and which ones you say, oh no, they're not really black? Because I'm a mom of mixed kids. So like, I just want to know. Because, like, I mentioned to some, like, whenever I say, oh, the first black president, somebody will say, like, oh, he's not really black, though. He's, like, the first mixed president. Or, like, I'll hear people talk about how Drake is mixed, but I've never heard anyone refer to J. Cole as mixed. He's just a black rapper. Yet, he is 50-50, just like those two. And, like, growing up, like, watching T and Tamara, like, I always loved them, so I know they were mixed. But, like, we just wasn't, I feel like, a topic of conversation. Like, when they talked about black girl magic, like, that's just what it was. Then when I brought up Kat Graham one day about, like, the 
mistreatment she received as a black girl someone was like well not someone there was a lot of comments of people like well she might have been mistreated but not as a black woman as a mixed woman so i'm just trying to figure out where y'all like draw the line like where like like i'm i just want to know what's like the qualifications like like i'm i have a daughter and then i'm pregnant with the son right now i'm like is he gonna be logic mixed or j cole mix like will he be told all the time like he's not really black or they just like consider him black i mean like also i'm pretty dark so like when they show they dark skin mom they go to kind of know but yeah just interested do you dislike light-skinned black people and feel like they're taking up space and should be categorized as their own race well that was a conversation happening under this content creator's video then he flipped it on me and said he was talking about drake's son adonis but i'm gonna get back to that point later first he said that he was talking about women like jordan who's a real woman from the nat geo study who identifies as black or biracial he said he doesn't like seeing people that look like her represent black people on television back to these articles that talk about oh uh the average person in the U.S. within the next 25 to 50 years is going to look like this. And then whenever you see the picture, it's like this uh, racially ambiguous person with all these European features, a sprinkle of melanin. If they were to play black American women such as Mary Church Terrell or Freddie Washington, that would be very appropriate. Now back to Adonis, who you threw in randomly. Originally, you were talking about people who were a little bit browner than him. And then you went to somebody who can be considered white presenting. Which was a great point because white presenting Negroes have always existed in history, such as Walter White and Moses Roper. It was common to see Negro men with blue eyes, straight hair, curly hair. And if they needed someone to play those characters, I would want to be someone like Adonis. And this is where I feel like I messed up and put myself in a low vibrational space and exposed my followers to low vibrational activities. I want to apologize for that. This comment says, and this is why I couldn't watch Lovecraft Country. And it dub he doubled down and said, is she dark skin? Okay, let me just say, I don't care for light skin people. That commenter saying he could not watch Lovecraft because Journey's a light skinned black woman. And he felt like she's not a representation of us. Another comment said they're not respecting Lamar, even though he was the highest paid player in the NFL for 2023, saying that Patrick Mahomes is only successful and recognized because he's light skinned. Last but not least, when people dislike light skinned people, they love to bring up Zendaya. If this girl told me she had two black American parents, I would believe her. Our ancestors did not choose to be racialized in this way and be subjugated to this social construct of race that we deal with in America. They did not choose to be discriminated against and they did not choose to go through the Jim Crow South. But this is what makes Black America. Learn about your ancestors and learn what they went through and how the social construct of race really affected them. And I'll leave you with this clip from Professor Skip Gates and Ava DuVernay, where Ava DuVernay was relieved to discover she had more African DNA than European, where Professor Skip Gates followed up with saying, what difference does it make? Because no matter what her DNA results said, she still would be 100% Black American. I'm Black! <laughs> 1.3% African. <laughs> Thank you. 41.5% European. This makes me so happy. I can tell. <laughs> this makes me so happy. Wait a minute, what difference does it make? I, I, I had had a whole narrative in my head of like, it doesn't matter. It's how I identify. It's how I'm seen in the world. It's how I, <laughs> you know, I did the whole thing, but I literally just felt like my heart just burst open because it does make a difference to me. Okay, before I say what I got to say, I want to show you all this hat from Bio Curls. Look, it has an opening in the back specifically for the curls, period. Now, I also want to say, y'all like doing this to light-skinned black people. You try to take away the validity of their blackness because they have lighter skin by equating us to non-blackness or whiteness. Both of my parents are black and all four of my grandparents are black. I'm black. My light skin does not take away from the fact that I am black. Now, I clearly will not experience what dark skinned people go through, but I am still black. I'm just a different shade. And let me also say this because I feel like it's important. I refuse to sit in my light skinned privilege. I refuse to sit in my light skinned privilege and not speak up for brown skin and dark skinned people. The first time I ever got called the N word with the hard ER was in the past month or two. Brown skin and dark skinned people have been facing that probably since they were children. That there was a privilege in itself. Even though it happened to me, it doesn't happen as often. So I am going to speak up and you can suck my ass.
know what's interesting, Angela? This Lala Bad Bunny interview. Did you mm-hmm. see that? Where oh, when she, she was, was on the red carpet and she was able to fluidly go in between oh, yeah. English and Spanish. Yeah. And she did a great job. She at, did. But there were some people who thought she didn't do good enough. Oh. Right? So even though there were all these people like, oh, look, <laughs> yo, look at Lala. Like, she's she is... This is an example of an Afro-Latina. This is an example of um, diaspora, right? There were people like, ah, eh, but d- does she really speak Spanish? Well, how come she didn't, you know, respond uh, more in Spanish? Like, there's always somebody trying to keep, yeah, and it's tell not, you that you aren't enough. what you are. So I think that's the the flip side, the negative flip side of trying to tell somebody, you know who they aren't when clearly like that is their culture. We've got Cardi B and Offset, like they have a daughter, they have a son. That's an example of children who are going to grow up with different ethnicities or cultures. And those are black children. Mm -hmm. So what does it mean to live at that intersection and have some people tell you, oh, well, you're not enough of this or you're not that. And what's what's so important is that people understand and I think you get this. We're black women no matter what. Right. right. Even if we have, you know, another ethnicity sort of mixed in in America, people see us as black. So if you are raising black children, you need to know mm-hmm. that you are raising black children and teach them to be proud of themselves, but also fight against some of those messages that will teach them that they aren't enough. And I think for Latinas in particular, this is important because. OK, so how I identify as someone with one black parent and one white parent. I've covered this on YouTube already, but here's the short form content version. So race only really matters in two ways, that's socially and culturally. Ideally, it wouldn't matter at all, but it matters socially, as in your phenotype, as in how society perceives you and therefore treats you, because, I mean, people are still getting killed over it, so therefore it matters. And then culturally, because no one wants to erase culture, that's beautiful. And I'm unique in the way that I identify socially and culturally as different. Socially, I would say I'm white perceived. I don't like white passing because I don't intend to pass for anything. But I know society doesn't see me as a black woman. And honestly, it's relative to the person's experience. Like a lot of people don't even see me as a white woman. Um, I mostly identify as other when it comes socially because I'm in that box where people don't know where to place me. And then socially, because I was raised by my black father and his black mother, my grandmother, in a predominantly black neighborhood, um, I identify culturally as black because that is my culture. (laughs) I grew up on the same food, on the same music, on the same hairstyles that most black Americans have. And I also have the same history as most black americans have and i would love to be able to say that i identify culturally did you know that the indigenous people of the canary islands were enslaved and taken to the americas yes and anthony ramos is one of their descendants you fernando de genera have a Juanche slave named andres did it ever occur to you that you descend from someone who had been enslaved explains why i got that fight in me yo so the Wanches people are the indigenous people of the Canary Islands, and some of them had brown skin, some of them were light skin, some of them had light eyes and blonde hair. But they were absolutely not European, and they were enslaved as early as 1341. So by that date, the Wanches were enslaved before many African nations were ever even contacted by the Europeans. So by the 1600s, the Wanches were essentially wiped out, but... Many of the Guanches' descendants were shipped to the Americas, so their DNA lives on. But when you get your DNA test, it's grouped in as European. My question is, why group these people in with the Europeans who hated them? Andres specifically states that because they are Guanches, Fernandez de Lugo hates them and drives them from their land and from said island of Tenerife. This is another example of how race is just a social construct and you must do more than just a DNA test to find out who you are and where your people come from. Same story with my family. This is a picture of my dad with his brother. Biological brothers, same mother, same father. But as you can see, two completely different phenotypes. They didn't have the same eye color. They didn't have the same nose shape. They didn't have the same mouth shape. They didn't have the same hair texture. They didn't even have the same shape of their face. But they were brothers. Mother and father. Biological. 
they were brothers. The pictures on the top, I believe they were both in their 30s, their passport pictures from the Dominican Republic, and the pictures on the bottom, I believe they were both in their 50s. I'm positive about my dad, but not so much about my uncle. I'd have to confirm that with my cousin who's on this app. She can tell me that for sure. But this is the family history. I mean, the only difference here is just the simple fact that my uncle favored my grandmother's father, whereas my dad favored my grandfather's family. That's it. Plain and simple. So to Dr. Joel Burville's point, race does not exist except as a social construct. It is not biological. And even though these two brothers came from the same family, same parents, they lived two different experiences just because of the way that they looked. I cannot give you the specifics about my uncle's experiences because I didn't grow up knowing him. This is family history that I have that's been passed down to me. But I know for sure I can tell you that my dad's experience was one of discrimination in Dominican Republic just as much as in the United States. In Dominican Republic, my dad still suffered discrimination. It may have been more subtle at times. It may have been more underlying because a lot of it was so normalized. But when he got to the United States, if he ever had a doubt in his mind, if he was a black man or not, it was definitely, definitely confirmed in the United States because he was always treated like a black man. Wow, this is a perfect example of the effects of Mejora La Raza in Latin America. All right, so you're saying here, the interesting part of all of this is that in a society where race acts as a tool of measurement, you, not your father or grandpa, would not be considered an Afro-Latino. Look at yourself and reflect on all this information that you are providing about blackness that you would not meet. Don't you think that it is very ignorant of you to insert yourself in this issue to say, yes, I, a person of light complexion with Eurocentric features, Experience the same thing as someone with a darker complexion. I, too, experience discrimination based on my skin color, condescending of ridicule. Well, first and foremost, I at no time, across any of my content or any place for that matter, have ever stated that my life experience has been one like a person of a darker complexion. I have not lived a life of discrimination. I have not lived a life where I have been, where I have experienced racism. I have experienced xenophobia, yes, but I have not experienced racism. I've never been discriminated against because of the color of my skin. So I've never claimed to have lived a black experience where I am discriminated against. I don't have control over the way that people identify me. I can only be completely aware of who I am. And in saying that, I also say, which I've said before, I'm completely aware that to a lot of people, I am racially ambiguous, but it's up to me to tell people who I am and to identify myself, not up to other people. And I do not need to conform to your idea of who I am, who I'm supposed to be, or how I'm supposed to identify myself, especially when I know where I come from and I know my roots. The thing that so many people like you, and especially people within my own Dominican background, cannot seem to grasp is how is it that I have the audacity to identify with a concept of quantifying blackness outside of Dominican cultural lens or of Latino lens <laughs> as a whole for that matter. It boggles a lot of people's minds. You have a problem with me, a Latino person, uh, someone of Dominican background, identifying with being a black person in the diaspora, identifying with being an Afro-Latina. You have a problem with that because of the way that I look, because we all understand, I mean, most people, I, I would think by this point, know that race is not real. Biologically, there is no race. Rather, race is a social construct and people assign race to themselves and others based upon how they look. However, 
there's more to that, especially when you look at the black American community, when you have people that look like me or present whiter than me, who identify and claim blackness because it's not just color, it's also culture, it's also heritage, it's also customs and lived experience. It's all of those things. You can't just look at one part of it and say, okay, because of this, you're not black. The whole uh, experience of being black in the United States has a lot to do with how black people, despite their presentation, black Americans, were able to band together under the banner of blackness. That never happened in Latin America. And when you look at Mejorar la Raza, what you understand is these two opposing ideas between Latinos and black Americans. And everything that you're saying is just, you know, really highlights that. It just shows the effects of it. Where black Americans were taught to honor their ancestors no matter what they look like, by still identifying with their blackness, claiming being black, claiming being a part of the black community, regardless of their presentation, because that is how you honored your ancestors who could never escape their blackness, who could not hide from their blackness, who were treated differently because of their blackness. That was the way to honor their ancestors. This was a way to always keep that connection and honor that even though I may be living a completely different life and I don't have that struggle that you had, I was not in bondage like you were, or because I look lighter and more of my Euro features are showing up, right? And I really don't have to live that life, but I still choose to because I want to represent those ancestors that fought to live, that survived, that fought for me, right? So the principle of that and understanding that when it comes to the Black American community, it's complete opposition to the whole concept of mejorar la raza that taught people in Latin America for generations. You have to better your race. You are black. You are at a disadvantage. You have to look for ways to get away from your blackness. So you look for a whiter mate and you look forward to those mixed children that will present more of that whiteness. And you look forward to those grandchildren also seeking whiter mates until you get to at least the second or third generation. Then you know by then if we keep marrying white, that is how we'll be identified. That is what we will be known as. That is how we can live. And this black ancestor that fought so hard, that went through a whole different experience than you did, gets erased because nobody is representing them anymore. Because people are caught up on phenotypical presentation. And that is the disconnect between black Americans and Latinos. It's a whole different concept, a whole different way of thinking. So you can continue to remain bothered by somebody like me, but I'm going to continue to live in my truth and I'm going to continue to honor my black Dominican father and my black Dominican grandfathers. I'm going to honor them and I'm going to claim them in my present right now. And I'm going to continue to stand and say that I am Afro-Indigenous, I'm Afro-Latina, I'm Afro-Dominican. And people like you are just going to have to deal with it. Dominican Republic, you better learn how to cook. You better learn a talent. You better learn something because you're black. So you better get good at something. Otherwise, why marry you? My mom, without knowing, a black woman herself, she will say, Tiene que aprender a cocinar y a todo esto porque tú eres prieta, mija. What she just said that her mother used to tell her was, baby, you need to learn how to cook because you're really black. But even if you develop any sort of skill, you still come second to anyone else. One of the things that a lot of people might not know is that the way the Dominican things has a lot to do with the way they teach us in school. They teach us history from the perspective of the colonizer, meaning the way they explain it is almost if we should feel like we were actually saved by being being discovered by being mixed. You cannot understand how difficult life is for someone like me who I've always known that I'm black. Being black was also the one thing that was always used to shame me. And it has everything to do with the fact that the school teaches us that we should be happy that we were colonized, that we should be happy that we're not living in huts, that we should be happy that we're not eating raw meat, that we should be happy that we get the opportunity to hopefully maybe marry a white man someday y mejorar la raza.
And then Dominicans are the most unaware people that we are a bunch of Africans speaking Spanish. It can be very difficult for a child to have to grow up that way. My dad used to always go like this to me. Me decía, ven muchacha, ven pa' acá, ven a enderezarte esa nariz. He used to go like this. He says, we got to get that fixed before you get to your teenage years. And he used to pull my nose like that. And I would look at my nose and I would think to myself, what is he talking about? Had you ever been called a, a Haitian as an insult? All the time. Maldita Haitiana. Maldita yeah. Haitiana. It's like calling somebody the N-word in America. Yeah. But majority of the times when those words are used are being used by people that look exactly like you. Well, I mean, exactly course. like you. And you're sitting there like, wait, what? So anything that has anything to do with African culture, it's frowned upon. A eso negro no me lo traiga la casa. A eso negro esto, eso negro aquello. I was a victim of that. Many Dominican parents thought I was African American and they wouldn't let me hang out with their kids because they thought I was African American. Well, of course. It is a propaganda to demonize black people in every parts of the world. And you either get it or you don't. And Dominican people, unfortunately, we do not get it.